This week on Maker Update, our robot overlords get a new terrifying mouth, the Pi camera goes deluxe, Maker Faire goes virtual, mirror inspiration, and singing toilet paper. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to another Maker Update. Today, I showered and combed my hair, just for you, just so you wouldn't have to see what I look like every other day of the week. Uh, but I'm not here to judge you. You can do what you want. I'm just here to show you some cool projects, so let's get started with the project of the week. Will Cogley and his menagerie of mechanical creatures have captured my attention again. This time, it's this animatronic monster mouth that he's been perfecting over the past few months. If you thought his eye mechanisms were incredible, this is a whole new level of complexity. Not only does the jaw open and shut, but they also adjust forward and backward for more natural movement. Plus, he has articulating lips and even a tongue. This is way more than a Halloween prop mouth. Will went to the extreme to create a mechanism that could replicate the mouth shape of each distinct phoneme of human speech. On his Instructable, you can find the files for 3D printing the teeth, the linkages, and all the fittings for the servos. There are nine servos involved in this design, which all connect up to an Arduino with an Adafruit 16 channel servo shield. But to really make use of this design, you have to find a way to program realistic speech movement. Will outlines two methods he's used one will let you type in a phrase and converts it into a series of phonemes which are communicated to the Arduino over a serial connection. It works, but Will says it's not very realistic. His preferred method is a Python program he wrote that uses the Natural Language Toolkit to process each word you type and sends it to the Arduino over serial. Neither option seems to be linked in this instructable, but maybe you can email Will if it's something you want to play with. Now for some news. The Raspberry Pi Foundation released a new $50 camera module called the High Quality Camera. It uses a 12 megapixel Sony camera sensor. You can fit it with a C or CS type camera lens. There's an adjustable focus ring on it, plus an integrated tripod mount. If you've been looking to do a Pi photography project or a security camera, a wildlife camera, computer vision, stop motion animation, this looks like a great option. On a related note, version 4.6 of the popular Retro Pi video game software is now available. The big new feature is support for the latest Pi 4 board, which unlocks a lot of performance improvements for the more processing heavy game emulators. Dreamcast, PSP, N64 all seem to run smoother than ever. This week, Make Community, formerly Maker Media, have announced that they'll be hosting a virtual Maker Fair on May 23rd. This is usually around the time of the Bay Area Maker Faire, which remains canceled for a number of reasons. The virtual Maker Faire is described as offering 24 hours of presentations, workshops, demos, and exhibits across all time zones. The main feature is makers responding to COVID-19. At MakerFaire.com, you can apply to participate or sign up for updates. Now for more projects. In the latest issue of Hackspace Magazine and on the Hackspace website, Becky Stern has a guide on creating an electronic affirmation mirror. You can build this with an Arduino and populate it with a set script of affirmations, or use a Node MCU board to be able to add and modify your list over the internet. Becky shows you both ways. You'll need a see-through mirror and a frame, both of which Becky sourced on Amazon. You'll also need some black paper tape to mask out everything but the display. And I have to say, I love the way the display looks. Also, having looked at the code, there's some great quotes already in there to get you started. Max Bjorvery created this playable toilet paper synthesizer. Each of the toilet paper holders has a Hall Effect sensor embedded into it using a 3D printed attachment. When the roll moves, it signals a Raspberry Pi to play a particular note defined in pure data software. In this case, the software is set up to sound like a church chorus Considering how much toilet paper Max has access to, I'd say there's a divine power at work here. Eamon Littler created this mesmerizing 3D printed cycloidal gear clock. It uses an Arduino Pro Mini, a real-time clock module, a small stepper motor, and a stepper driver board. There are around a dozen pieces to print and assemble, but the end result looks like nothing I've ever seen before. I'm not sure if I want it to tell me the time or just help me zone out. Now for some tips and tools. Adam Savage continues to mine his workshop for tool recommendations during lockdown. One of his latest is this $20 wearable magnifier. He also shows off all the other options he's purchased along the way, including some high-end Carl Zeiss surgical magnifiers. For the money though, 
This cheaper option offers the best all-around performance. Check it out. From the open source COVID-19 medical supply group, there's a new guide on the current state and best practices for maker-made medical equipment. It's a great resource that also includes ideas for how you can help in your community. On Thingiverse, Hong Sung Il has this detailed guide on creating your own 3D printed motorized claw machine gripper, a single continuous rotation servo, drives the mechanism open and closed. It also got me thinking about how we might be handing out candy if we're still doing social distancing in October. I'm not trying to jinx it, but it's also kind of a fun problem to solve for. On the Cool Tools channel, I talk with Jordan Bunker about a $5 oiler pen that's great for precisely placing machine oil or even PTFE grease right where you need it. If you're sick of oil spilling everywhere from the built-in applicator, this is a great cheap solution. And in case you missed it, on Tuesday we put out the monthly Adafruit edition of Maker Update. You can find it on the Adafruit YouTube channel or by checking out the link in the description. On this week's DigiKey Spotlight, check out their latest Tech Basics video on energy harvesting. If you're designing a wearable or a device that needs to live outside and disconnected, it's useful to know about the various ways you can capture and store power. The video includes a demo of an ST Microelectronics Energy Harvesting Evaluation Board as one example, but there are a lot of ideas here to explore. All right, and that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment. You can get on the Maker Update email list so you never miss a show. A big thanks to my patrons on Patreon and to DigiKey Electronics for not only making this show possible, but also continuing to ship out orders during this difficult time. Next week, Sophie Wong returns as a special guest host, giving me a little break. So look forward to that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.